All right, welcome back to our second video on economics with calculus, where we're going to stick with using integrals again and give you a little bit more detail about integrals and clean up some of the things that we said in our first quick video, where we learned that if you have a demand curve, say 12 minus 2 thirds Q, and you integrate it, it's the opposite of a derivative, you'll end up with a function like unknown constant C plus 12 Q minus 1 third Q squared and that if you plug in a quantity into Q here, it will give you the area under the demand curve, adding up all of the marginal benefit. Marginal benefit means how much you're willing to pay for each individual unit. If you add up how much you're willing to spend for each individual unit, it gives you the most you'd be willing to pay for all six units in this case, uh, which we figured out was 60. If you have a supply curve and you take the integral, it's just the opposite of a derivative, you get c plus 2q plus 1 half q squared. You plug in a quantity like 6 into it, and it adds up all the marginal costs, which is how much it costs to produce each individual unit for the labor and materials. And you add all those up, we got 30, and that is what we call the variable costs. $30 for labor and materials does not include the fixed costs of the firm, however. So you might be wondering, okay, what about this unknown constant Q? If we plug in, like we did, to the demand curve, if we plug in 6 there for 12 times 6 and minus 1 third times 6 squared, and we get 72 minus 12 equals 60, which is the total benefit, you might be wondering, what happened to that C, that unknown constant? Let me tell you. There's two answers to that. First answer would be, since we know that the integral under a demand curve tells us the total benefit, which is the most someone would be willing to pay to get Q units, what if we plugged in 0 for this function? Then uh, 12 times 0 is 0 minus 1 third 0 squared, that's 0. So this function has to give us the most someone would be willing to pay to get uh, 0 units, which would be C. How much would you be willing to pay to get 0 units? Answer, $0. So we know that C has to be 0 in this particular case. Now, that's not necessarily going to be true in all cases, so let's do it the way you're taught to do it properly in a calculus class which they tell you once you've taken the indefinite integral to do a definite integral that's an integral between two points uh, under a curve then you're taught to add this little up and down bar here which says evaluate the function at 6 and 0 which would tell you to plug in 6 and when you plug in 6 we know we're going to get 60 so we get 60 minus uh, plug in 0. Well, we just said that 12 times 0 minus 1 third times 0 squared is 0. And if you take this function evaluated at 6 and then take this function evaluated at 0 and subtract them from each other, then you get C minus C in the two equations. The two C's cancel, and so you really just end up with the 60 that we talked about. Now, what about a case where we're not evaluating this function between 0 and 6, what happens then? Well, let's take a look at that case. So once again, in economics, the most important thing is understanding what the mathematics is doing. It's called applied mathematics. And if you can understand what the math is doing and what question you're asking, then it, it makes life a lot easier. So suppose you wanted to know, instead of the area under the demand curve between 0 and 6, suppose you wanted to know the area under the demand curve between 6 and 10. What this would tell us is how much someone would be willing to pay in order to get the 6th through the 10th units. So they've already got 6 units. How much would they be willing to pay for an, a package of another uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, 10? So actually this would technically be the 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th since you've already got the 6th unit. So we'd add up this green area. How would we do it mathematically? You'd evaluate, this is called the definite integral, between 6 to 10. So let's bring our Word document back over here. 
So we'd convert the indefinite integral into a definite integral, and we would change the zero here into a six, and the six into a 10. And what this is saying is, is plug in 10 for Q, and then plug in six for Q, and subtract the two answers. So if we plug in 10, into this function. 12 times 10 is 120, so 120 uh, minus 1 third times 10 squared, which is 100. So 1 third times 100 is 33.33333, and then it say subtract off what you get when you plug in 6 into this function, and we already established that when you plug in 6 into this function, you get 60, so 120 minus 33.33333 minus 60 gives you 26.67, depending on how many places you want to round it off to. So that tells us that the area of this green portion is $26.67. That's the most this person would be willing to pay for units 7, 8, 9, and 10, assuming they already had 6 units. Pretty cool, huh? Now let me take you through a standard kind of application of uh, integrals here. Now suppose instead of getting to the equilibrium point at eight dollars and six units, suppose there was something like a production quota. Now a production quota is a law that says you are not allowed to produce more than a certain number of units. Now let's, so let's suppose that the uh, Congress passed a law saying that it is illegal for a business to sell more than two units. If the quantity that the business can sell is two units, then they're going to charge the highest price that they can, and um, that price is given by quantity equals two on the demand curve. What is the highest price? What is the marginal benefit of that second unit to uh, the person with this demand curve? And it looks like here it's between 10 and 11, but in order to find the exact price, all we have to do is plug in that quantity of 2 into this demand curve, 12 minus 2 thirds Q, and we would be able to see that that price is 12 minus 2 thirds times 2, 12 minus 4 thirds is $10.67 right there. And so um, that price, $10.67, we could if we were just using the algebraic way, we could calculate the consumer surplus and the total revenue and the um, variable costs and all that. But with calculus, we don't have to do all that. All we have to do is to take the integral of the demand curve from you know, zero up to two, and by plugging in two into this integral, uh, 12q minus one third q squared, we get 12 times 2 is 24. We get minus 1 third times 2 squared. That's minus 4 thirds. And 24 minus 4 thirds is 24 minus 1.3333. 22.667. So the, the area under the demand curve, which is the total benefit, is going to be equal to 22.67. That's the most that a person would be willing to pay for both those units together. And then we can integrate under the marginal cost curve and we can get the variable costs. So the variable costs are what you're going to get if you plug two into the integral under the supply curve. So 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 half times 2 squared. So that's 4 plus a half times 4, so that's going to be 6. So $6 is the variable cost to produce these two units. So now that we know that the area under the demand curve up to two units is $22.67, and the area under the supply curve up to two is $6, and we also figured out last time that the area under the demand curve up to six, six units is 60 and the area under the supply curve up to six units is 30. Then, using all that information and the fact that this price is $10.67 and the total revenue there is going to be two times 
$10.67, 2134, then we can figure out that the, this is 6, this blue area must be 24. If total revenue, the green plus the yellow, is 2134, then the green must be 1534. And that 1534 is producer surplus. And if the total area here, including the pink, is 2267, then 2267 minus the total revenue has got to be equal to $1.33. And the only thing left is this red triangle, which is dead weight loss. And how could we find that? Well, all we have to do is to take the fact that the total area of all these colored areas is 60, and what's left has to be $13.33 in dead weight loss.